Hello world, how we doing, how we doing, how we doing? Streaming live. Let's test the feed to see if you're getting what you need. I'm your host this evening. For you, for those of you who don't know me, <laughs> welcome. Uh, you'll get to know me real soon. I'm just looking to make sure my feed is set up before I talk to you guys today about relationships. All right, so it looks like my feed is good. And uh, let me just check. To yep, uh, audio is good. And I'll do my best to make sure that I pay attention to the comments here. When they come up in the chat, I may not be able to see all of the comments because I'm still learning this new platform software thing called Ecamm Live. Uh, and so today, uh, first off and foremost, how are you feeling? Feeling it right here, you feeling it right here. Probably feeling a little wonky right now or a little um, strange times. Strange times, <laughs> but uh, you know, for me, I've always been of the mindset of of an optimist. I get frustrated sometimes when things don't work out or when I think that things aren't should be different. But hey, guess what? That's a lesson in itself. But I didn't come to you to talk about what's going on in the world. I came to you to talk about relationships, and so that's what we're going to talk about today. And, you know, what you are going to be able to walk away with here, at least what I'm hoping, is that when we're done having this conversation today, you will have a better grasp on what it takes to build a, like a real relationship. And I, I say relationship, but you can use that interchangeably with networking you could also use that interchangeably with any kind of relationship. So what I'm going to share with you today is applicable to any kind of relationship, not just like business relationships or uh, your family. Uh, it's for all kinds of relationships because I believe that uh, relationships are really the key to life. I once heard the quote, you... You, um, it was actually in the book Conversations with God, and uh, the the idea is that you know you know who you are in relationship to other people, right? So, uh, if you didn't have something to to deflect what you were, right? Because people are mirrors, so they they kind of deflect who we are. We get to see who we are in relationship to other people. So, uh, with that said. Let's talk about how I view relationships. Um, they're extremely important. They are really central to a lot of the things that I've been able to achieve in my life, both professionally and personally. Um, I, I think of relationships as, as currency, right? And not like currency, like I'm looking to exchange something for something, right? It's actually just the opposite. It's more of how can I uh, leverage my skills, my gifts, my talents, the things that I know, the people that I know to be of service, right? So a lot of times when we when we are getting into a relationship where we're we're engaging with someone, we're usually thinking, what can we get out of it? We're usually thinking, you know, if it's, it's, if it's a business transaction, it's like, how can I, you know, close the deal? If it's uh, a romantic thing, right? Um, you know, whether, whatever your sexuality is, if you're pursuing the, 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 the opposite sex or the sex you're attracted to, it's how can I get my rocks, right? My rocks off, as we as we used to say. Um, 
or maybe it's courtship. Maybe you're really looking to get find a partner, right? So even then, it's you're 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 looking for something in exchange, right? It's like I want to if, if I find the right person, I'll do this to get this result. And what I've found in my experience is those relationships usually don't last because they don't have a solid foundation on uh, on 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 real principles, right? There's real, it's, it's a tit for tat. It's a, if you do this for me, I'm going to do this for you. And while those relationships serve a purpose and you may have some of those relationships, I'm speaking more in the context of relationships that longevity, right? L relationships that you want to have 10, 20, 15, uh, 50 years, and so whenever I, uh, now, and it hasn't always been this way, I wasn't always, I didn't always think like this, um, but it's more of what can I give? And I, I wrote down some examples of this on my whiteboard back here, which I'll probably refer to. And you... The goal, at least for me, I'm not saying that this is the goal for you, but for me, it's been to shift from a place of what can I get to what can I give. So from what can I get out of this to what can I give. And that has made all of the difference in my life. It has made all of the difference in my life. My best relationships um, have been and continue to be the relationships that I, um, I, I, I look to, to serve, right? I have, I have people that are very close to me, uh, that aren't my family that I consider my family. I have people that I can call on for anything, right? And the, I, the, the, level of trust comes from knowing what I've put into that relationship, right? And it's not, it's not a, it's not a thing that I go in looking to ask, right? I never build a relationship with the, with the, with the idea that I'm going to get something one day, right? So I never, I'm never depositing things and with the idea that I, at some point I'm going to ask. I know that if I generate enough value to these relationships that eventually, hold on, my camera just went away. What happened to my camera? Go back. Okay. Um, I know that if I need something at some point that I'll be able to ask these people for those things. But that's only because, again, that I have invested in that relationship a lot heavily, um, probably more than that person has invested in the relationship. So let me give you some examples of this serve first mentality and what this looks like. I actually, a good friend and mentor, which I've mentioned in this group, his name is Tony D. Tony Grebmeyer. Um, I actually learned a lot of this from him over the last couple of years. And he was actually introduced to me from a former client of mine uh, when I ran my podcast agency, Pod Parrot. And at this particular time, he was looking to get some help with his podcast. He was like, I'm going to launch a podcast. I want to get some help. I think you can be the person to help me. Right? So that was kind of our initial engagement. And I was I was so broke. <laughs> this was when I was like living at home with my mom. Uh I had like I had like zero dollars. I was like literally like borderline like about to go out and get a job. I think I ended up getting a job. Um a consulting gig, but it was still like a part time thing. But anyway, so I was so broke, right? And so like my initial reaction was like, how can I fucking close this dude? 
I know he's got money. I know he's successful. Um, has a you know a multi-million dollar su successful shipping fulfillment business. Um, Inc. Five thousand every year, and I was like, I'm gonna close this guy. I'm gonna close this mofo right now on this call, <laughs> right? Because I I had this mentality of like, I gotta eat. I gotta eat. I gotta eat. And what was funny is that when I talked to him, he was like, yeah, you know, I love what I'm hearing. You know, I'm, you know, I'm not in a rush right now. I'm just gonna, you know, feel it out. And I'd really like to continue to like, keep, keep the vibes going with you, keep the conversation going, hang out. And, you know, maybe, maybe you come out, maybe I, I'll see you out at uh traffic and conversions. I'm like, in my head, I'm like, man, I ain't got no traffic and conversions money. This is a conference. I was like, man, I'm just, I'm broke, man. I just need to, <laughs> need to close this deal, right? But the funny thing is, is like in that moment, I was able to recognize, I don't know what it was. I don't know if it was like a, a sense that I got or if it was, um, if it was just something that resonated with our conversation, but I was like, you know what? Me trying to close this deal is is minuscule in terms of the amount of value that having this person in my life is going to create. So I shifted my mindset from like, I need to make this sale right now, me, 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 to like, let me just build a relationship with this guy. And... I'm glad I did because this relationship turned into a mentorship, turned into a friendship. I mean, it has made me way more money and I've gotten way more out of that relationship. Not just money, but it's gotten, it's just, it's filled up my life with so much more than money could ever buy, right? Um he's brought me opportunities. He's introduced me to people. I've st I stayed at his house. I house sat for him when he went to Italy and like watched the dogs, right? A uh, place to stay rent free. You know, how cool is that? And so there's two things here. There's two things that I want you to pay attention to in the story. The first one being that, you know, I was in a place of lack, severe lack, or at least my perception was lack, right? And so when your cup is, I'm drinking a glass of water right now, right? And this cup, you can see, this cup is is half full or half empty, depending on who you ask. It can be half empty or half full, man. I don't know. I don't know. But, <laughs> um, you know, when this cup is full, how easy is it for me to drink from? Pretty easy. How easy is it for anybody else to drink from? It's actually not easy. I'm sorry. So you got to tilt the glass a lot, right? And if you came to have a sip, you got to tilt the glass a lot. So imagine the same cup being full to the brim. How easy is it for me to take a sip? How easy, how easy is it for me to give you a sip? Very easy. So the first lesson here is that you have to make sure your cup is filled up in order to be able to come from this level of, of, of serve first, right? This mentality, this philosophy. Because if your cup isn't filled up, it's going to be really hard for you to like be intentional with the relationship. And again, this goes for any relationship, romance, family, like business, friendships, your cup has to be full. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean money, right? Because you can have money, but you can have be empty right here. Uh, you, can you can be soulless. You can be broken, right? You can have money, but you can have nobody around you and to enjoy that money and spend it. And um, on the flip side, you know, um, you can not have money, right? But you're but you can have those other things. So when I say your cup is full, it's in context to 
you know, this, this relationship, right? If, if you are, haven't been in a relationship in a long time and you, you know, you, you haven't been sexually satisfied and you're in a, and you're approaching, you know, the, the opposite sex, right? Like you're going to come off as being needy. You're going to be like, Oh my God, I just, I, <laughs> right. And that's not what you, and when you do that, right you're presenting yourself in a place of lack, right? Not from a place of abundance. And that's probably going to push people away. And it's the same with any kind of relationship. So that's the first lesson. The second lesson here is that it takes time to nurture relationships. It takes time to nurture relationships. Now, how long, right? And how do you nurture those relationships? Well, I don't know. It could be six months. It could be a year. It could be five years. For me, it just depends on the person. It depends on the vibe. It depends on how much time we've FaceTime we've gotten together and our like paths, right? Have we taken similar paths? Have we both traveled? Have we written a book? Have we podcast? Because then it's like you kind of feel like you're cut from the same cloth a little bit and you kind of feel like you're, you're on parallel journeys. And I think to some degree, like you that kind of makes you feel like you're kind of arm in arm and you're going into battle together because you or you've been in battle together. It's kind of like the the bandwagon team. Like if you're on like maybe it's not the bandwagon thing. Forget the bandwagon thing. All right. Forget the bandwagon thing. It's not what I meant. When somebody's on the same like football team or they played at the same high school alumni, kind of that vibe, right? So nurturing the relationship. So one, your cup has to be in full, not empty, right? How do you do that? It doesn't necessarily mean money. It can be spiritual. It can be spiritually. It can be um, from a place of just comfort, being people around you, um, whatever that is, right? You got to make sure your cup is full because if you're coming in that relationship looking for your cup to get filled up from that relationship, right? Whatever that means, you know, for you, then you're not going to be building the relationship in an authentic way. Okay. Now, the other piece is how do you do this? Or how do I do it? I don't know how, you're, how you do it or how you're going to do it. I'm just going to share with you what has worked for me. And when I think about my best relationships, all my best relationships, all of them, there's this common denominator and that common denominator is that it, I'm always like trying to like just give. I'm just like, take this, take this, take this. How can I help you? Buy, let me buy this. Let me do this. Let me hook you up. Can I connect you with this person? And it's not even from a place of, at this point, it's on autopilot, right? Like I think before it really took effort for me to like, all right, who can I help? today. Now I'm just like, I can, I'm, I'm really good at connecting dots. And so when I hear somebody say, Oh, uh, like today, a friend of mine, I was talking to him on the phone and he was like, I, t I, I, uh, a guy who I was just around tested positive for COVID. Okay. And, um, he's, and then he said, um, something about, he hadn't been working out or like in the conversation, right? So what I immediately asked him was, um, do you have insurance? And uh, are you able to go get a COVID test, right? So he didn't have insurance, it turns out. Um, and so I remembered, oh, I remember this guy, John, let me connect you with him. So I emailed John, reached out, connected him, right? I don't know if he'll do business with John, doesn't matter, right? I don't need to get anything out of it, but it helps him. And then there's this uh, lab test, Lab Corp has a thing where you can do a mail-in COVID test. So I was like, hey, if you, uh, one, I can send you this link to this mail-in COVID test, right? So instinctively, my brain is always working like this. How can I serve? How can I serve? How can I serve? How can I serve? So I'm, um, I'm always looking for opportunities to be of service. And again, this is something that I haven't always done. Um, 
for the last couple of years, it hasn't been easy being an entrepreneur. And, you know, it was really just scraping by and trying to just like keep the lights on. And that's a very hard place to be in service um, from authentically. And while I think I've, I, I hoped to be authentic, I really wasn't, or hope to be in service, I really wasn't doing it authentically as I am today, right? Like, I don't need to work with people. I choose who I work with. Um, I have money in my bank, right? That gives me a sense of security. Um, I'm not in a rush to, to really, there's, there's a sense of urgency in that, like, yes, I have to do something right like I have to be in motion but it's not like from a place of oh my god what if the wheels fall off it's not from a place of fear it's from a place of abundance and so when you get to serve like this I think you're you're everything is just amplified right everything is amplified because your relationships are a reflection of 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 who you are in a lot of ways, right? Remember at the beginning I said, you know who you are in relationship to other people. So I thought I would share that because I know that one, we're in some difficult times um, right now and we have some interesting times ahead. <laughs> I don't know who you asked, but I'm pretty sure we can all agree that it's going to be pretty interesting. And then the other piece of that is that, you know, at one point, and I'll share this story and this will be it before I go. But at one point, you know, that's, relationships were all I had. You know, I mean, in terms of currency, right? In terms of like, what is it, aside from my skills, I didn't have any money, but I had skills and I had relationships. And I, and I had the, you know, uh, a, a never quit attitude. Right. But in terms of what did I have that could help me improve or like get somewhere, or get an opportunity or get in the door of an organization. And it's all fundamentally come down to relationships. The current role I have right now at the startup that I work at. Was I, I leverage relationships to create that opportunity. Um the relationship that I have with uh, my current girlfriend, um, uh, that was something that I leveraged relationships to create that opportunity, right? And it's not leverage in the sense that it's like, oh, let me take advantage of this. It's, it's more of just being mindful that a lot of the success and the opportunities that you or get aren't going to be because you're smart. It's just, it's just honest, right? It's not going to be because uh, you're excellent, right? Like you're just, you're a shining star, right? Maybe it will, but more often than not, it's going to be through a relationship. And I think if you look at your life and you really do an assessment, you'll probably see that some of the best opportunities have come through you knowing someone or knowing someone like maybe that's how you met your spouse through a friend or maybe that's how you got your opportunity at your current uh, place of employment or how you got an investment opportunity. Everything is really fundamentally about relationships. So it's important to genuinely build those because I think that in this day and age, a lot of people can smell the bullshit, right? It's like, hey, I know that you're out to get something from me, right? Uh, and people can like really feel like when you're genuine, <laughs> you don't have to even fake it. It's like, well, you can't fake it because people will see right through it. And so when you're genuine and you're trustworthy and you do the right thing, whatever that means to you, right? When you lead and you give without expectation right like you lead the relationship it's not you coming to the relationship with your hands out it's you 
saying, hmm, what does this person need? Hmm, how can I help them? Hmm, who can I introduce them to? Hmm, um, what can I, can I give them a book, right? There's so many different ways that you can add to someone's life. It's, uh, it's, 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 it's not as hard and difficult as you think. And it doesn't necessarily have to be money or a sale or opportunity or an introduction. It can just be picking up the phone and saying hello. You know, a lot of people don't even do that these days. So if you just pick up the phone and hello, yes, it's me. <laughs> if you just do that, you know, you're going to be, that's going to make you stand out. And a lot of people are locked up in their house right now and they don't have anyone to talk to. So just by picking up the phone and just saying hello, um, you'll be able to build a solid relationship, a good foundation, and not need anything. Just just pick up the phone and listen. Because a lot of people just don't even have that. You'd be, you'd be surprised. Some of the most successful people I know that don't get an opportunity to just have somebody to just like, lean on and just vent to because they're always the person that everyone else is going to right and the higher you go up the food chain the ladder whatever this thing is you know you start to kind of you know be a little bit more suspicious of who's around and you know like are they trying to get something from me or you know i don't know so even more with people that are successful if you show up and you are um, in service, it's gonna it's gonna show in a really big way. And again, none of this is to be calculating or to be malicious or to like take advantage of, you know, or to manipulate people. It's just being a genuine good person. It's just doing what you would want others to do unto you. The golden rule. I think it's the golden. Is it the golden rule still? I don't know if they call it that. Either way, that's uh, what I wanted to share with you today about relationships. So, um, maybe we should recap. Should we recap? I love a good recap. Uh, so, we talked about the serve first principle, right? Serve first. You have to go from a what can I get to what can I give. And... This happens because, well, I should say, it's very hard to do this if your cup looks like this. Even if you're an optimist, even if this glass is half full, it's still half empty. And in order for me to be able to give you a drink of this, I have to make sure it's filled up. So make sure your cup is full. That doesn't necessarily mean money. That can mean a lot of different things, but your cup should be full, right? Uh, and then the uh, the other piece of this is to think about what it is that you can add to the relationship, right? What value can you bring? Is it your time? Is it maybe it is your money? Maybe you do donate to someone's charity, or maybe you do say, hey. You just you just put out a you know, uh, you just put out a book. You just put out a CD. You just put out whatever a course or, I'd like to get that. Just shoot me a link. That would blow some people's mind. You just randomly hit them up and ask them to buy their course, or their book. Happened to me the other day. It's kind of wild. I was like, what the heck? This is crazy. But people do it. Um, and then the final piece is to to be genuine, right? To to just to do it in a way that's authentic to you. Don't do it in a way that's where you're trying to get something. This isn't networking, right? This isn't one of those crappy networking events where you hand out your business card and it's like, "All right, what can I get? What can I get?" You can do deals like that and you can build relationships like that. But the likelihood that those relationships are going to last 5, 10, 15 25 years is is uh 
It's not likely. It's not likely. And uh, if I'm going to build a relationship, if I'm going to spend the time, if you're going to spend the time, wouldn't you want to make sure that it's like sustainable? Right? Because your time is not renewable. You're not going to get any more back. So I know for me, I've decided that if I'm going to spend the time, I'm going to make it worth it. And some people aren't worth your time. That's one thing you're going to find out. Some people just, they're just, they're toxic. And you got to wait from, bye, bye. You got to do that and love them where they're at. So it's a wrap. This is uh, 30 minutes, 44 seconds. Uh, I think I got a nice, a uh, nice good session in here with you guys. And um, I hope that uh, it's a good year for you coming up. I know we've been through a lot this year. And these next couple of days are going to be interesting. But I, if there's one thing I know, it's that if you always invest in yourself and you always bet on yourself, that's the best investment. That's the secret. Always bet. <laughs> all right so that's all i got for you guys gals be well be good stay worthy stay wise and um see you soon peace